This is Armour Reforger running on the Steam Deck. There are many reasons why I can't show actual gameplay of this just yet. Reasons including the janky controls, the fact it's Linux, and because this game doesn't really have any gameplay to speak of right now, so instead I'll just float about looking at the pretty scenery. Which is kind of how I play the Armour series anyway. But to understand the Steam Deck, you first need to know that it follows a different set of rules to a normal gaming PC. You're probably looking at this right now and thinking it looks pretty decent, despite it only being on medium settings and at a resolution like 960 by 600 And you're right, it does look great. Gaming on the Steam Deck does away with my normal resolution worries. It doesn't even matter if I hold it right up to my face, it still looks pretty decent. However, if I plug this into a monitor and display this exact same image on a computer screen, then it looks like rubbish. It's one of those weird phenomenons that stands in the way of being able to use the Steam Deck as an actual PC. But it can be done, and whenever you see the footage on screen like this, it's being directly captured from a capture card, and I'm attempting to control it using a plugged in mouse and keyboard, which is really janky in this game since it isn't officially supported on the Steam Deck just yet. Because of course it isn't. It's a massive open world military sim. Of course it wasn't designed with the Steam Deck in mind. So factoring all that in, it's pretty impressive that it can handle it at all. But how well can it handle it? Like I said, I'm showing medium settings at 75% resolution scaling here. I feel like it's the sweet spot for showcasing the game. Exploring the map, it either hovers somewhere between 40 and 50 FPS, or at a seemingly fixed 60 FPS, even though there's no V-Sync or performance cap active to speak of. If I stare at the sky, then it can go up to about 75, but the Steam Deck doesn't like having to pump out more frames than it needs to, so performance across most titles plateaus at around 60. Which is fine for this device, which, remember, seems to have its own set of rules. I was initially concerned about using resolution scaling on what's already a very low resolution, because I know this is one of those games where you really need to know if that distant blob is a person or a bush. So if I had to pick a game where I didn't use FSR, it would be Armour. But like I said, the Steam Deck follows its own rules and as you can see, it doesn't look like I'm using a sub-HD resolution here, bar the prominent pixelation and shimmering around the edges of things, which seems to be a thing at 800p no matter which settings are used. So let's see what this thing looks like, if using different settings and resolution scaling. We'll start with what armour looks like at its various graphical presets, but at native 1280x800, just so we're not cheating. Low preset is… it's usable, but it isn't pretty. It makes the world look sparse by using simplified textures and fuzzy shadows. It looks like a much older game than it actually is, clearly operating well below the sweet spot for the engine. And the kicker? In this particular instance, it doesn't even run any faster than the medium preset does. So moving up to medium preset brings it up to acceptable standards. Buildings and nearby trees have proper shadows, trees now seem to be self-shadowed, at least a bit, and stuff actually has textures. And there's a bit more distant scenery too. And like I said, it runs the same speed as low does, so it's a no-brainer in this example. In practice, it does run a bit slower in some places, but I still found it to be playable, and a lot more visually appealing. This is how I'd play armour on the Steam Deck. Moving up to high brings the game up to how I feel it was designed for. There's a lot more detail, near and far, and a lot more shadows on the smaller objects now as well. So there's certainly a lot of reasons to try and aim for high rather than medium, but on the Steam Deck, you're going to have to accept 30fps if you're going to play like this. Ultra didn't improve things quite so significantly, but it does up the view distance on some things. However, performance on the Steam Deck wasn't acceptable. It was noticeably slow and juddery, and it stuttered horribly when loading in new info. Don't play it like this. And now I'll show another area, this time in a forest at ground level, because there are different results here. Low still looks disappointingly sparse, and it lacks contrast, but look at that frame rate, pretty much locked to 60. Medium drops this down to just 40, but adds so much more vegetation that, visually at least, it's kind of worth it. You can also see the trees are better shaded, and the lighting seems to have more contrast. So while you might argue that more foliage makes it harder to spot enemies, this might be somewhat offset by the generally improved contrast and clarity, now that the distant forest looks more like a forest than a thick, mushy soup. Now I've pointed this out already in my main video about armour, but I noticed that there's a mid-distance after the close-up shadows have faded out, but before the distant shadows have faded in, and it's in this region that it causes the scene to look too bright and unshaded. And it looks like this is what's going on here in the medium preset image. Now I know it's not meant to look like this, so rather than it being a perk or a downside of medium preset, it's simply a bug in the engine right now. Which you can see is resolved by high preset, which will probably still have the same problem, but it's pushed somewhere further away, hidden from view in this example. High also drops the frame rate down from 40 to 30. It adds more grass and greatly improves the shadow definition. Like I said, I feel that this is the preset the game was designed around. 
drop the resolution, enable FSR to try and restore some of the clarity, unlock the frame rate to 30, and you could get by playing like this. Ultra Preset drops the frame rate more and doesn't add enough to justify it, in my opinion. Kind of like Ultra Presets in general, really. And it's here that I'd like to show some examples of what difference enabling FSR can make to the image's clarity. Long-time viewers of this channel will be sick of me explaining upscaling by now, but just in case this becomes a viral video that brings lots of new viewers to my channel, firstly smash that subscribe button, hit the like and leave a comment. And secondly, what FSR is, is an upscaling method that sharpens the image. There's a bit more to it than just the sharpening, it also stretches the image more intelligently. I'd say the resulting improvement is maybe about 25% from the upscaling and 75% from the sharpening, but what it doesn't do is to actually add more detail to the image, like DLSS or FSR 2 would. Hopefully this game will get support for FSR 2.0 at some point, which will greatly improve the quality further. But until then, FSR 1 is still really worth using. The effect is effective on a computer monitor, but on the Steam Deck screen it's virtually magic. It's like the image snaps into focus, and even though I know it's no more detailed than it was before, it still comes across in my mind as looking more detailed. When people complain about a low resolution, it does make me wonder how much of that is the limited pixels, and how much of it is just how blurry those limited pixels look when displayed non-natively on a screen. So yeah, I didn't think I'd say this, but I give the all clear to use FSR in armour on a Steam Deck. As I'll be talking about soon, getting an experience like this to work on a handheld is about making lots of little compromises, and FSR is one little compromise that's benefit more than outweighs its asking price. But how low do you go? You don't get something for nothing with FSR, and because it doesn't add detail to the image, you're essentially adding blind spots between each pixel, and this only gets worse as you lower the resolution scale further. So even if it looks acceptable, you may still find it annoying to play with, especially with how much everything slithers and shimmers when in motion. Dropping it as little below native as possible down to 95% scaling is, in my opinion, the worst of both worlds. You're combining the performance of native resolution with the artefacts of FSR. So if you're going to use this technology, then do it properly by sliding it down to maybe 75%. This is only 56% the number of pixels, so theoretically you could almost double your frame rate at the setting. Without FSR on, it looks distinctly blobby, but with it on, it looks about as crisp as native does, but obviously is not as detailed. Dropping a slider down to 50% is just 25% the total number of pixels, so in theory you could get up to four times the performance of native, but obviously in practice this doesn't happen, and at this point even FSR is unable to claw back enough sharpness to make it worth using. And the slider goes all the way down to just 20% scaling, which at the Steam Deck's resolution is a meme. The 80s called, and they want their pixels back. Before I show you more, I think you need to understand the Steam Deck. It's true what Valve is saying about it, it can power almost every game on Steam at at least 30fps, but it can push very few titles beyond 60, and the performance you'll get from it will fluctuate depending on what's happening, and far more so than a more powerful device would. But like I said, it's a different rulebook to a standard PC in terms of how this thing operates, and what is deemed acceptable. I wouldn't be so quick to accept 30fps on a desktop PC, yet when using it on a handheld device, it feels strangely acceptable as does its low resolution and its 60Hz screen, and you also have its battery life to consider, so it's sensible to lock it at 30 or 60 maximum, depending on the title. I unlocked it for this video and plugged it into the mains, not that that gives the Steam Deck any more power than when it's running on battery. What you see here will be how it powers the game when on the move. So with all that in mind, this is kind of impressive, given that the Steam Deck is powered by a 15 watt APU. Bear in mind that CPUs normally have 65 or 100 watts of power to play with, while a graphics card can start out at 75 and go all the way up to 350. So to condense what normally consumes 200 to 500 watts of power down to a single 15 watt unit is incredible. But because this power is always being dynamically allocated between the CPU and the GPU, it, again, seems to play by a different rulebook to other PCs. For instance, it might be worth dropping the graphics options further down than you would do normally, simply to free up some more power for the processor should it need it once the action hots up. If there's any system that's in need of a dynamic resolution scaler, it's the Steam Deck, running Armor Reforger. So let's test this thing when there's some gameplay going on. Like I said, this device is going to be more greatly impacted by demands on the processor and graphics card due to its shared and restricted resources, especially when it's already dealing with a demanding situation. So I chose to run at medium settings with 75% resolution scaling and FSR enabled. Placing a squad down in Reforger dropped the frame rate from 60 to 45 straight away. It's not like they're doing much, but they are existing and that still takes resources away from the graphics card and channels it towards the processor instead. Now to place an enemy team down and to watch them fight it out. And it actually holds up pretty well. It hovers around 40 FPS with the action going off, which is still playable and we're finally seeing the Steam Deck's processor actually using more watts of power than the graphics card is, now that it's got some gameplay that it's having to calculate. 
So let's try it again but with a larger engagement. This is an 18 vs 24 bot fight, which is a pretty stressful thing for any PC to run. And sure enough the Steam Deck drops to about 20 FPS, which I wouldn't consider anywhere near playable. So your performance in this game on the Steam Deck is very much dictated by the gameplay at that particular moment in time. Once one team's been defeated, the frame rate shoots back up to about 40 FPS again. It's just a sad fact of gaming that you need the frame rate most when you have the least of it. The comments this video gets will likely fall into one of two camps. Either you'll think it's mightily impressive that the Steam Deck is even running a game like this, or you'll be saying that this is proof that the Steam Deck has failed. I've been doing this YouTube stuff for a while, I know what sort of comments to expect. And I know that whatever I say will trigger at least one of these groups, and if I'm doing things properly, I'll likely be hated by everybody at least a bit. So here's what I think about it. It is very impressive that the Steam Deck can run Armoury Forger, and when things are quiet it can do so very smoothly, and with enough graphical power to make it look decent. This device has clearly got the graphical processing grunt to make things look pretty, but I wouldn't call Armoury Forger playable on this device when most people playing it will be doing so in a massively multiplayer battlefield, which will likely slow this thing to a crawl. Playing online will probably demand less of it than bots would, since it will be a server somewhere else taking the strain, but I suspect the Steam Deck will still get dragged down by the demands. Armour is a notoriously CPU intensive game. And this is where the Steam Deck really falls behind a full desktop or console system. Its graphics card is cutting edge, but still only a fraction of the power of even an entry level desktop graphics card. And while the processor in this thing may already be several years old and only equipped with 4 cores and 8 threads, it's clear to me that it's the limited power it's got that's really holding it back. And you're not going to get much more at the moment from a handheld device that has such limited airflow to call itself with. So like most games, the Steam Deck's hardware seems to be just about capable of running Armoury Forger, but it comes with compromises. And more so in this game than with most, given how demanding it is on both the processor and graphics card side of things at the same time. Even a budget desktop PC, thanks to its increased power budget, would be far better equipped to handle a scenario like this. I've spent a while thinking about what I'd like from the Steam Deck. What would be the first thing I'd improve about it? I've heard some people saying that the Steam Deck would be better with a higher resolution screen or a faster refresh rate, but all that would be wasted if its core components weren't also upgraded. But like I've hinted to, the speed of these things is limited by the form factor of this device, so right now they're all equally matched in that they all seem to struggle equally with everything. But then, if you improve everything about the Steam Deck, then its price would inflate by so much that it would lose sight of its intended purpose of being an affordable, capable, portable gaming PC. Believe it or not, Right now my biggest problem with the Steam Deck is that it runs on Linux. I'm not going to try Windows on it until I've done all the videos I want to on this device first, but Linux is proving to be a pain, especially on new and unsupported titles like Armoury Forger. I couldn't even get it to load until I renamed the EXE file for some reason. Then once I had, I couldn't run it online because BattleEye doesn't play nicely with Linux just yet, but they promise it will do eventually. And then I had problems with the Steam Deck's controls. No matter which controller setup I used, it treated a plugged in mouse like a joystick, which is why you'll see my view wildly flicking about everywhere. And there doesn't seem to be an easy fix to that right now either, which again is a shame. But look, Armoury Forger, running on a Steam Deck, and it looks great. What a time to be alive.